Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and what I'm going to be doing today is talking about um, React, but specifically about JSX. So this, I'm not going to really be getting into props, maybe a little bit into props, but mostly into just how to write JSX and like what are the rules of JSX and all these things. So let's spin up a new React project. Okay, and I'm gonna just do npx create react app and I'm just call this JSX practice. And that'll generate a project. <clears throat> That's gonna take some time. Again, that just ends up generating all these files over here. So it's just doing all that stuff. And then again, generally everything always begins with your app component. That's generally where your app begins. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD into that new folder, JSX practice, and I am going to start the server, npm start, and then, oh, executable run, am I in the right folder? Oh, I wrote npx start, npm start. As you can tell, I just woke up. This is with many of these videos because I do these before I start my day. So that's kind of how this goes. Okay. So as you see in the beginning, we see this, the spinny React logo. And this is kind of where it's coming from, this app component. And this kind of shows you sort of like what is the most basic thing a component is. At the end of the day, a component is just a function. So the, that's a function. And then it's return value, so here's a return keyword. So this is the return value of this function. Is this HTML-like syntax? This is what's called JSX. That's all a component is, okay? It's a function that returns JSX. Okay, so for example, let's pretend I delete all of this. So now it's just a div. It's, it's empty, okay? Let me just move this to the side. So that way we can kind of see them side by side. So you see what I do as I do it. Okay. So all it is is you're writing HTML and it gets translated into JavaScript. So if I were to do this, like let's say const, um, let's do an h1, hello world. <clears throat> see, it looks like you're writing HTML, but you really aren't, okay? What's really happening under the hood is that this is going to get broken down by Babel, which is a, a thing that translates JavaScript into actual old school JavaScript. So we can prove this by just console logging app, just console logging our app component. So if I were to console log what's in there, okay, let's take a look. Uh, should be in my console. Okay, so we get this, this function um, uh, do, 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 do. well, I didn't want to go there, but you see that it, it generates this function. Okay. And then that's really what's being sort of generated. It's just generating this function that returns this JSX, which generates this object. And you can see like in this object, there's like a div. And then inside there's gonna be another object that generates the H1. It's kind of this weird actual raw JavaScript syntax. <coughs> but that raw JavaScript syntax would not be pleasant for anyone to write. So what Facebook did is they created a thing that you write this HTML-like syntax and it just translates it into actual real React code. No one actually writes sort of raw React code and uses like react.createElement. That's all under the hood. <clears throat> so that's what JSX is. It's not really HTML, but the idea is you're, you're writing what you would want the end result on the screen to be. And then, and then Babel will translate that expression of HTML into underlying like React code. Okay, so you don't have to write that stuff, which is really cool. But at the end of the day, just basically whenever that component is used, whatever that component returns, JSX wise, it's what shows up on the screen. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, so if I wrote two H1s and I wrote another H1 that says goodbye world,
Okay, and then what if I wanted every H1 to have an H2 next to it? Okay, this is subtitle. Okay, just imagine like generic subtitle there. Now I could just type out all the HTML like I would in a normal HTML file. But see, this is kind of redundant. Okay, I'm, I'm writing kind of like the same pattern over and over again, an H1 followed by an H2. And this is where React begins to shine, which I'm thinking, okay, instead of typing sort of the same HTML pattern over and over again, what we should do is turn this into a con uh, its own component. So then at this point, we would go create a folder. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be called, you don't have to make it in a folder. It's just something you can do jump something we typically do to organize our code and in this components folder I'll make you know a component called titles okay that's what we'll call it titles.js so then here I just define a function now this function will return some JSX and what I'll do is I will copy the h1 and the h2 Oops, Z. Oops, now I just messed up. So, Control Z here. Cancel. Control Z. Yep, let me recut. Let me recut that out. And then let's go back to titles and put that as a return value. Now, here you see I have this extension called error lens that kind of gives you a heads up on errors. So, you see that this starts giving me an error saying JSX expression must have one parent element. Okay? So here we run into our first rule of JSX. The first time like JSX is just different than writing normal HTML. And that is every, every time JSX, there's a JSX expression, it has to start with one element. So in that case, I can't just say H1, H2. I have, they have to be inside of something. So we can wrap it in a div and say put the closing div here. Because without the div, they're both at the top. They're both top level elements, but by making the div, the div is the only top level element, and then both the h1 and the h2 are both inside the top level. They're both children of the div. So in this case, I no longer get that error. And this is typically the solution. You just wrap everything in a div in each component. Okay. Now it's still complaining. Uh, I think it's just because this is so far. function. Oh, I didn't give the function a name. Titles. There we go. Okay, so that'll be the name of the component. That's the name of the function. And then this function, whenever I use it, returns this. Okay, nice. And now for me to use it somewhere else, I just have to export that thing. I export default um, titles. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm exporting this component to other files. So this way, this way, this component will be available to be used in other files. But literally all this is is a function, and anytime I use this function, it'll generate this code. So now what I can do is I can then import titles from, and it's in the folder called components. So dot means we're starting in our current folder, going down into the folder called components and grabbing the file called titles. Okay, and then to use it, all I have to do is this. T, I put the component name like if it were an HTML tag. I just got to make sure I self-close it. And there we go. And then instead of, I can then replace this with the same thing. Because they're both the same pattern. They're both an H1 with an H2. Oh, but wait a second. They're the same exact thing. That's no fun. I thought this was going to allow me to do... The same thing, but not, but different. Okay, this is where props comes in. Okay, so in this case, what I may want to do is say, hey, this one has a title. The first one is going to have a title of Hello World. And a subtitle of subtitle. And then I can copy these two and change this to goodbye world 
And notice that this hasn't changed anything yet. It's still, all I've done is given these two components data called props, because the props is short for properties. So I'm giving this, this use of title, this version of the component, this instance, because the idea is I created this function and I can use that function multiple times called titles. And then each time I use titles, I can give it information via these properties or props. Those props are then received by the component as an argument to the function. So for me to receive those props, I gotta make sure I put pass in a parameter into the function. So the, the, what you usually do is you pass in the word props. And then now I'm able to use that in my JSX. So here's where JSX gets cool again. Anytime I have curly brackets in my JSX, in my HTML, I can then inject the variable there. So I can say, hey, right here where this curly bracket is, I want you to take go of my props and use, if there's a props called title, use it. And see now, they when they both say two different things. And then here I can be like, okay, well, in my props, if there's something called subtitle, use that. Cool. So in this case, I've just kind of created a template for what will appear when you use this component and I can use the props to customize it so then I can say hey I want to use this titles component again and I'll just pass it different props okay so we'll say here um, cheese and subtitle gouda Okay, and see, even though I'm using the same component, the output is different. That's that's the beauty of props. It allows me to make my JSX more flexible, so I don't have to make the same thing over and over again. Okay, I'm not having to type that H1 and H2 over and over again. This becomes more beneficial with much like a card or a carousel or something like that. Cool. So, now, let's see here. Let's make this more interesting. Okay, let's make another component. Now I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna create a component called container. And the idea is I want something like, like a, a grid, like a, a flex box grid container. Okay. So I'm gonna say function container. I'm gonna receive my props in case there is any props, which there will be, because I intend to use the props and this one's gonna be really simple. I want to return a div. That's it. And this div, I'm gonna use a, a built-in prop. There's one prop that you don't have to pass in. It's just kind of kind of there. It's called props.children. Okay, and I'll show you how this works in a second. Okay, but the idea is that this div surrounds all the children of it. And then what I want this div to do is to have a style. So in case you, if you want to style in React, you could use an inline style like this. So you do you say, hey, style, use Java, use curly brackets, so that way I can say, hey, I want to pass it a variable, but I don't have any pre-existing variables right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass it an object. So now I have an empty object that I'm passing to it through those curly brackets. And then in that object, I could define all my CSS properties. So because, again, this is JavaScript, not HTML, so this is written differently than it would be inside a HTML style property. Okay, this is written sort of in the JavaScript CSS style versus an HTML CSS style, which would just use standard CSS syntax. So in that case, if I were to say change display, it's just an object. So I'm going to say I want display to be flex. <coughs> I want flex wrap to be wrap. I want, um, I think that's fine. Okay, flex wrap wrap, cool. And then we need to export the component, export default um, container. Now what happens is that this is gonna generate a div with these stylings, which makes it's a flex box, that div, and it receives its children, okay? The children will appear in the div. Okay, so now let's go use that in app so we can see this at work. So. I'm going to import this component. 
import container from dot slash components slash container. And what I want to do is I want all these titles that kind of show up side by side, kind of like you would expect in a flex box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say container. But notice I didn't self close it. So now I have an opening and closing container tag. So what I can do with that is I can wrap these components in that and see now they're in like a flex box. The reason is, is because all this here, anything that's in within the container uh, component is treated as props.children. So props, so I'm saying, hey, anything that's a child of this component shows up here. So if I were to remove this, they would all disappear. Because I've not, even though all that's written in the JSX, I haven't actually said where in container should the children appear. Okay, so in that case, now I have to like release it and then everything shows back up. So as you can see, like, hey, it's a flex box. Everything is now in a horizontal row. So you can see how we could probably use this for like cards or something like that. But let's say I want to style those, these individual things here. But the amount of styles I want to write maybe be a little too much for an inline style. I could use a CSS class. So I could be like class, but you can't use class because class is technically a word that's already used in JavaScript. So since JSX is not true HTML, I got to use class name. So we'll say class name titles. Still works the same. And now I can go to index.css and I can go in here and write some styles. So I'll just delete the stuff that's like already here and just say, hey, when there's a class of styles, I want the div. So again, that class is on the div that each that surrounds the h1 and h2 for each of these. So each div is inside that other div that's a container. Okay. So I can say, hey, for each one of these, what I want to happen is I want them to have a border a border that is three pixels and it's solid and it's red. Okay, see now, oh, that's, you know, we see a border, but they're all kind of close to each other. So let's give them some space. So we'll say margin three pixels. Okay, cool. Now they're all separated from each other, but the text is kind of crunched in there. So we want to give it some padding. So padding, we'll say four pixels. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. But they're all kind of different widths and lengths. So let's say flex. Oh, no, no. Let's say width. We'll say 200 pixels. Okay. And... I think some of them are just bigger, so let's just do an overflow. And we'll say overflow will be scroll. Okay, refresh. There we go. So now we have all 200 width things, and see, like, when it goes bigger, we get this overflow text, and it just kind of forces it within the size. Cool, and then we'll just say height. We want them all to be uniform height, 300 pixels. Okay, so here we have all these flex boxes. Let's make it 200. That's a little too much. There we go. But now if I extend it, see they're on a row. But if it's smaller, they wrap like so. Okay. So you kind of see how that works. So JSX is just like working with HTML. You just have to imagine the HTML as its own individual pieces. So instead of writing one big HTML file, I'm thinking, okay, hey, here's the div that acts as the flex box. Okay, these are the things that I'm putting in that flex box, each individual sort of item in the container. And then I can go back to my app.js and assemble the pieces. So see, here's the container with all the individual titles inside of it. And what happens is that it's much easier for me to see what's going on here. There's a container with three titles inside of it. Now, if I want to understand exactly how the container works, I can go look at the container, but the container components code is pretty small. The titles components pretty small. So it makes it really 
makes it much easier to look through your code because you're not looking through this one giant blotch of HTML. You can see small pieces that have a specific purpose and really kind of understand their purpose as you flip through these files. Um, okay, and that's sort of like the basics of React. Um, yeah, okay, so basically a component, JSX is really just HTML that has to be one parent element. Okay, um, I can wrap other JSX inside of a component and that becomes its props.children. Once I make a component, I can make it customizable by passing it props. And then those props get used inside the HTML or JSX of that component. And that determines sort of what's visible on the screen. Okay, and um, yeah. So the way you have to just imagine it is sort of how do you want your HTML to look like? So what I do is I kind of imagine sort of what the finished HTML should look like and then and then construct that. So what I would do is I'm thinking, hey, I want sort of different titles as a flex box. So I think of the container. So again, there's always like a block that has the flex property. So here's my container that contains the, the blocks inside of it. And then each block, which is really just like a div or a main or whatnot, is here with the content that have that's inside of it. Okay, and then basically, so I know that HTML, this is like a, think of it like stamps, like you're just stamping. And then I go to app.js and I say, okay, here I want the container to have three blocks inside of it or three titles inside of it. Okay, and I know what HTML container holds and how it works. And I know how the HTML for the titles and how that works and I'm just assembling them to create the bigger picture that I wanted but I end up doing a lot less typing. And then later on, if I need to customize it, I don't have to like dig through the HTML. I just know, hey, like these are the two titles and subtitle. Let me just change that. I don't need to know what the underlying HTML structure is. I just edit the props and it edits the result. Okay, and if I need to add another title, I can just plop another one, pass the two props and you have another title. Um, and that's the beauty of it. And even better, like let's pretend that I had an array of several titles. So let's say const array equals, and then we'll just make it an array of objects. So first object, we'll say title, let's we'll say title one, subtitle 1.5. I'll just kind of do that a few times. And again, this is all error. Since I have the, like the server on, it updates and I have autosave on. It like updates after every keystroke because it's autosaving. Um, that you know, you may want to turn autosave off while you're doing that if that if this gives you anxiety seeing the errors pop up. But um, yeah, so I just change this like two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. So now I have this array, and then instead of me having to write this titles component for each item in the array which can be tedious, I can use curly brackets, take the array, because again, the curly brackets allow you to do any kind of JavaScript inside of them. So I can say, hey, array, I want to map over you. And I want, and this is where like knowing all your array methods really pays off. So I can say, hey, I want to map over you array. And for each, for each um, yeah, for each title inside the array, what I want to do is return a title component where the title equals title dot title because title again, it's throwing the first thing in the array in the variable called title. That's how map works. And I want the subtitle to be get rid of these spaces, we don't want those spaces, title dot subtitle. And then we close the tag. And that should work, something's off here. Oh, did I forget to, yeah, I forgot to put a cl closing curly bracket right over here. And let me just make sure that I don't have too many curly brackets. Yeah, I think I have an extra curly bracket over here. Um, okay, this parentheses finishes that. 
And then this parentheses, what is this parentheses for? I don't think we need this. And still doesn't like something. Oh, this is supposed to be titles. There we go. And so you end up getting a block for each item. So see, now I don't even, I saved myself even more time in actually having to type in the titles. By, by putting, basically setting up my data and taking advantage of organizing my data into different data structures as objects and arrays, I can really minimize the amount of code I have to write. And now if I add another one, because it's just looping over that array, I can just, all I need to do in the future, if I need to add another block, I just do this, go boop, boop, and then I add six, and 6.5, and the code just rebuilds it, and there's 6.5, and I didn't have to type anything else. So the beauty of JSX is it allows you to write HTML the way you're used to writing HTML, but allows you to really bring all your JavaScript power into it. Like that's why it's called JSX, JS JavaScript Extended. Um, and then you can use all your, you can chain off these array methods. So for example, let's say I only wanted to build a block of the ones above three, I can use filter. So I can say, hey, I want to filter, and I want to filter for every title. I want to filter just the ones whose title dot title is greater than three. And then that'll return an array. Uh, let me just refresh that. Uh, R dot, oh, I spelled filter wrong. Filter. And see, look, at first the filter runs. So first the filter runs and filters out anything that doesn't have a title greater than three. And then that returns an array with just those filtered items. And then I map over them and then generate JSX. So you can really kind of do some pretty cool stuff um, when you really kind of start really knowing how to take advantage of putting your data in an array, mapping over it to generate HTML for it. And then later on, again, all I have to do is update the data. Like I just go here and update this array and it's going to update what's going on over here. So again, that's all JSX is, okay? And again, I don't now see this may look a little messy to you, right? Just putting all this like this whole expression here is like what's going on there. So what you can do is I can sit there and say something like this. I can do like make a variable called titles const titles and you can also save JavaScript expressions in a variable. So what I can do is I can move this whole expression, cut it out put it into this variable and see now I have a variable called titles and then instead of injecting and then I just inject that variable here and see that becomes a little bit easier to read so I'm like okay hey what's titles let me go see where that variable is created okay it's created right here and this is what titles will give me so okay let me just go break this down in my head but I can be like okay container with titles inside of it so I could just write the JavaScript directly in those curly brackets, or I could save the output into a variable and then inject the variables into my JSX, which probably looks a lot cleaner. Okay, so there's different ways you can do it. I could just wrap this in a function. You could really anything you can imagine. It's just JavaScript. So it's really a matter of just getting, um, always going back and really solidifying your, your foundation in JavaScript to really be able to take advantage of JSX in an awesome way. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Make sure you go sign up for the Slack and Discord channels over there at devnursery.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter, and all that good stuff. Have a great day and enjoy.